Joining me now, the national president of the Zionist Organization of America, Morton Klein, also with us, the dean and founder of the Meaningful Life Center and best-selling author, Rabbi Simon Jacobson, and back with us, our special guest, a veteran uh, Israeli diplomat, Shahar Azani. Morton, I want to go to you first. The atrocities have been devastating, but is this an opportunity, much like, and we've, we've talked about this being compared to 9-11, is this an opportunity for Israel and the West to, to finally unite against Islamic terrorism? Yes, the whole world now sees clearly that the Muslim Arab Hamas group is a monstrous group that wants to kill every Jew. Their Hamas charter says explicitly, every Jew on earth must be killed. The Fatah Charter, that's Mahmoud Abbas's charter, calls for the destruction of Israel and armed, for, sir, armed struggle against Jews. Hmm. The world has to understand we're dealing with outright evil. This has nothing to do with land or a Palestinian state. They've been offered a state three times in the last 20 years. They turned it down because they refused to accept the clause, we support Israel as a Jewish state. So I think the world will finally begin to understand uh, what Israel is dealing with. This is outright evil. This is Nazi-like evil. And I'm shocked, I must add, yeah. that only yesterday, President Biden gave UNRWA $34 million yesterday, a, an organization that teaches kids to hate Jews and to murder Jews. We have to stop funding Iran, UNRWA, the Palestinian Authority, that preach hatred, violence, and murder. The Jews are first, but Christians and other non-Muslims are next. We are right. at risk here in the United States of America with this yeah. open border. Yeah. Many radical Muslims have come in from yeah. Syria, Iraq, and Libya. And this is a big danger. We have to address this issue. But Ra the world now will begin to understand, I believe. R Rabbi Jacobson, the Jewish people have been challenged throughout history for thousands of years. Now they face another dire threat. Are there lessons from the Bible that can inform how Israel can and should respond to Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran? And for that matter, are there lessons for all of us uh, in terms of that response? Absolutely. I mean, listen, the greatest lesson in life is the fact that the Jewish people are here for close to 4,000 years. A small nation, we're only 14 and a half million people strong in a world of 8 billion. So every person on earth should be asking the question, how did the Jews survive? The Roman Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Egyptian Empire, the Spanish Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Greek <coughs> Empire, I could go on and on. And the answer is very straightforward, straight from the Bible. Because what Jews mastered was the ability to look evil in the eye and not to cower in fear, but at the same time know that we are connected to something divine, something eternal, through faith and trust in God, in eternal values. When you hold on to that, nothing in this world can shake you and can hmm. terrify you. And that's exactly yeah. what's happening right now. We've, we've yeah. received a big blow, 13 150 innocent lives, men, women, and children were taken. We cry, but we take our, our anger and we take our passion and we channel it into a war for good, good for all people, not just for the Jews. Mm -hmm. And this is a lesson for everyone, yeah. a lesson in resilience, yeah. a lesson in strength, a lesson in fortitude, that that which doesn't kill us makes us strong. Yeah. Shahar, uh, the, the Biden administration has been back-channeling some ideas about slowing the assault or a de-escalation uh, that's irked some folks in, in Israel. Um, that would require a diplomatic solution to one degree or another to kind of take the place of a military one. Is that even feasible here, given the, the brutality that we've seen? It absolutely is, and there is no diplomatic solution with the terrorist Nazi organization Hamas. The only solution can be the complete and utter eradication of this terrorist Nazi entity from our border. That's the clear <coughs> demand made by the Israeli people, and this is what the blood of our brothers and sisters are crying to us mm -hmm. from the earth. Morton, uh, you, you mentioned the, the funding of these, uh, these uh, anti-Jewish uh, anti-Semitic organizations. Uh, you know, anti I'd like you to compare. I'd like you to compare 
uh, the the administration this administration's approach to the Palestinians uh, with the for instance the Trump administration uh, and and how funding was handled uh, there just talk to us about that please Donald Trump said to Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority which is a terrorist dictatorship he hasn't had an election since 2005 Trump said until you stop paying Arabs to murder Jews they pay them lifetime pensions to murder a Jew you we're giving you no funds. He cut off the 500 million, gave them nothing. Biden comes in, ignores that, and increases it and gives, gives them $800 million to this uh, terrorist regime uh, uh, which wants to destroy Israel just as much as Hamas does. And uh, Trump would never have given money to Iran. Biden has given them $6 billion from South Korea banks, $10 billion from Iraqi banks. From the banks. Iraqi banks, yeah. And, and, and ignored all sanctions. Yeah. Trump had enormous sanctions on him, where Iran had only $4 billion left in reserves. Now they have $70 billion, $70 billion, because they've been making a fortune out of oil, because the United States has ignored the sanctions that Trump put into place. So uh, uh, they, they believe the Biden administration, I believe with the influence yeah. of Barack Hussein Obama, uh, believes by uh, giving funding to these, it'll moderate them and make them more... Uh, humane and civilized, and it all it's happens, and it all seems to happen kind of under the under the radar screen. The, the, you know the, the the flow of these resources, but now you see what the result of that can be. I, I need to leave it there because I'm up against the top of the hour. But I want to thank you all for being with me this Sunday. Thank you, thank you. Morton Klein, Rabbi Simon Jacobson, and Shahar Azani. Please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you.